I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Such a goal, please. Okay, Mayor Jones. Here. Brenneman. Here. O'Hara. Here. Wasslager. Here. Matson. Here. And Jess. Yes. And Travis Keel is absent with notice. All right. Uh, any additions or actions on the agenda? If not, I look for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we need to approve the minutes from the December 6th meeting. Any action on that? I'd make a motion to approve the minutes for the December 6th meeting. A second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we need to approve the bills for payment as in your packet. Yep, we need a motion for that. Sorry. Yeah, I look for a motion for the bills as presented. All right, you got a second? I'll say. Any discussion? I don't think I've seen anything in there that uh, threw up any flags. If there's no discussion, we'll vote. O'Hara? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Brennan? Yeah. Madison? Yes. Wasslager? Yes. All right. Any public comments uh, from uh, from anyone in the crowd? Sandy Dean. I'm back. Sandy Dean. Um, I brought up the name a couple of times of Bob Gap, the preservation guy from Missouri. He actually started a whole university on preservation and reconstruction. And, and um, I've been trying to come up with the ideas and the money to get him to come and speak especially to the council, to the economic development, to the state and local historical people or anybody that cares at all about history. Now, the cost for him to come is $4,000. He'll do a tour of the town, well, the main, the downtown, and I'm here on behalf of the downtown Hartford okay. and myself. Um, he would do a tour of the downtown, take a look at the buildings, the gauge, the bank, the one across the road, whatever, and give an actual educated, <coughs> working opinion on the value and possibilities of restoration over renovation or destruction, heaven forbid. Um, just before COVID, um, I came and the council um, gave the DHI control over the 10,000 plus some odd dollars of the sheer estate money to be done for us to do something with for a community project or a community thing. And, I don't remember um, that. Uh, yeah, you're about the only one, Mark. I think yeah. you're the only two that know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you were here. Mark, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyway. And um, because of COVID and all that, we just never got anything done in the ISG thing. They were waiting for that. Yep. And so anyway, in my wisdom, I, I decided that if we could use $4,000 of that to bring him here and actually do the kind of study, and he'd do a program that night too. He does these seminars and programs that are just yeah, very informative and, and very true to what the facts really are. So anyway, I don't know that the DHI needs permission <laughs> from the city of uh, how to use that money, but the board um, decided that that would be a, a good option, and then um, we could use the remainder to do you know something that would bear their name more. Okay, I want to ask. Teresa, one question. Did we, was there any recommendations or 
I thought we talked about something we were going to do with that. It did get earmarked for something. I was just talking with Karen. Um, I'll have to look back. Yeah, because I... There was a motion made about it yes. to earmark it, because you had had a request when you came about earmarking it for... A book specific. or something? Didn't we talk no, about that? that book? the book was something uh, else. I don't think I think um, it was something else. Wasn't that with that? That was another one of my and projects. In fact, <laughs> and, and we'll have to double check. And I thought we already put the money into the down yeah, account. It's, it's there. Yeah, you have the funds. Right? Yeah, it's there. It's in the city downtown. The city downtown, downtown account. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 We would it's still, that, we would still would want them to come to yeah, us and say, hey, we want to move this money. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to look into it. Come on, Mark. You remember how that? Uh, I don't remember. I guess what it was your mark for, or yeah, even your mark for anything. Well, I think it. I don't. Initially, okay. You wanted to use it for something, and I. So the the um, initially the 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 money was put there. No. The explanation for giving it to the city in the first place from the person who did that. Um, her reason to the family and to those who were really extended family was that um, it was supposed to be for parks, something to do with parks. But she never earmarked it. It just got given to the city without any Right, I think we might discuss that. So, and so then that's why the council decided that the downtown Hartford could yeah, we have access to those funds. And then, as I recall, I was supposed to be the one to okay whether it was an appropriate use of that or not. I don't think this is a bad idea, but I think we probably need to go back and do a little research and probably yeah, and we can't do anything this at this point either. this is just public comment right. so yeah. right one of the yeah. first meetings in january if we can get this all ironed out yeah, we can get it on the it. agenda yeah. i just wanted to yep. get to your nope. attention he um he's already filled up um i've got an earmark on may 6th if okay. we can do this i it was it was either that or next year again i mean okay. he's, he's a popular guy so all yeah right. if you could take a look at that yep. and just for the for the record, um, Violet was like the, one of those who created the whole senior citizen situation. She was the one that, that worked on the committee then that created the Historical Society to get the month building on the register. She was actually also the one that brought that rural library, that group that brought it to town in the okay. first place. Just so you know yep. that there okay. is definitely <laughs> yeah. a sheer connection and right. that is something that she'd be. All right, we'll do a little digging and. All right. Thanks, All right. Guys. Thank, Thank you. You, you bet. Merry Christmas to you. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm Benjamin Parker. Everybody knows me. Um, I'm sure everybody that's last two days has read all the Facebook posts about the stupid snow up on Western and everything. I wanted to say thank you to the street maintenance guys. Craig, you guys did an awesome job cleaning up yesterday. Thanks. They did the best they could under the circumstances with the blowing wind. Um, there's not enough people out there in the community that will stand up and defend you and the workers. So I wanted to just say thanks thank you. on behalf of the whole community and those that were whining and complaining. This is their time to come in and speak. They have a right to complain. Otherwise, they just shut up and stay home. Right. Well, you know, thank, so. you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Ben. All right. You're going to give your report later. We'll leave, we'll leave you until later. <laughs> How's that? Man, I'm mean. I don't feel good. I'm mean. Yeah. I'm mean. Boy. All right, let's move down to the next phase of the meeting. Ordinances, resolutions, hearings, agreements, applications. We have second reading of Ordinance 737, which is the implementation of our sewer sur surcharge. I'll make a motion to approve this ordinance 737 of the sewer surcharge. All right, we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Tonight I'd like to bring up one item if I can. I had one citizen ask me that if we should be making another stab at 
put this out to the citizens so they know what's know what's happening. So this afternoon I sent Teresa an email and I said, what is our possibilities? And we're gonna put it in the January newsletter that goes out to everybody that signed up. We're gonna put it, well, I can't remember the other. We'll, we'll put a blurb on it with a, like a public notice on our uh, website. Website. And Facebook. And then our actual bills that everybody gets, there's a little line we can put on the bottom. It's limited to number of characters, but you know, we'll put a little blurb that, you know, surcharges for loan, Repayment for beginning wastewater plan. We'll have whatever to shut it you down. Can say. Yes, whatever. We only got so right. many characters, but yeah, um, you know, try to get out there as much. Um, I think we know we'll get a lot of phone calls, but you yes. know, we'll fill them here. But when's the surcharge start? So it would start with basically your February first bill. January go, bill, which we get. They'll go on March. to the January usage, and so your February first bill. So you're just more so trying to get ahead. Of I'm trying to get ahead of the game. Yep. yep. We've had mailings, though. We've had public. I know. Oh yes. Yep. 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 When we had our public meeting, yes. every household and, got yeah, a mailing on it. I told this too. citizen that I yeah. said, "Listen, I said, we have we have not just put our head in the sand and not said anything." Nope. And I happened to be over at the senior center, and there was about 15 seniors there. So when I was explaining to her what was happening, I don't have the quietest of voice. I made sure that everybody that was sitting there heard, heard what I was talking about. And all the information we had on our public meeting is all on our website. Yes. Too. So explains I just wanted to make sure that the council down. see, you know, so you guys knew that this is what's going on. I, I told this citizen, I said, I don't think we're going to have the appetite to have another uh, citywide meeting. We've done that. We put it out there in the postcard advertised that we were having it. We had about 50 people show up. The people that are going to get the message by that way have got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's going to be the same thing to people if you do it. Again. I, I don't think there's any, I mean, we're to a point now where it's like too late for anyone. It's just like awareness. Yeah. 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 Right. And that's really what she was saying today. She just said, I just want, you know, and she thanked me 10 times. She said, well, not everybody has this opportunity to set down with the mayor. I said, sure, they do if they call me. <laughs> I said, I've given this speech enough times now. I she said, oh, it's, more a, chances oh, it's a speech, she said. And I said, yeah, it's a speech. I said, I kind of got it nailed down what I got to say, you know. So, okay, I just wanted to run that past the council. Makes sense. To, we'll, we'll put it out, you know, like on okay. our website, Facebook, yep. newsletter, you know, as much as we can. And yep. I, we, we've talked about in the office, we know we'll probably get a lot of phone calls. But, yep. you know, just, All right. So, any other discussion? Thanks for allowing me to bring that up to you guys. If not, we will vote. Wasslug? Yes. Madison? Yes. Brenneman? Yes. Jazz? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. All right. We'll move down to the second one. Which is Ordinance 738, Supplemental Appropriations for 2022. Anything we need to add on to that, Teresa? Basically, it's you know it's our supplemental appropriation to cheer up the budget. Yep. Um, you know, it doesn't move money around; it's just budget items. Um, no major changes. Basically, though, what's in red, there's some dollar amount changes because of bills that came through in December that we didn't know at last reading, so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for making this very simple for me. Uh, hopefully it helps. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. I see so. your extra effort. Okay. <laughs> and, and you can always call or stop in too with yeah. any, any not, agenda. Not just for you. Yes. Not just okay. for you. That's, where, that's the service. Uh, that I, I just noticed yeah. that it was really nice and laid out. Yeah. Thank you. Good. All right. And and an action by the council. I'd make a motion to approve ordinance number 738. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. O'Hara? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Brenneman? Yes. Matson? Yes. Wasslock? Yes. All right. Third one is resolution 2022-20, appoint a representative from Hartford to the SMGA Advisory Board. This was a request by Jesse, if I remember right, right? He sent yep. this through. And the advisory board they have is made up of the communities that you know pay dues into it. Um, they meet once a month. Um, currently, so for this last year, um, 
Amy was appointed as our um, basically representative for Hartford, since she's our economic development director. I'm her backup, in case she can't make it. So. Um, but yeah, it's just a formal resolution, just appointing somebody onto their board to represent the city. And this resolution appoints Amy again, correct? Yes, it does. Yep, yeah. same thing. Appoints right. Amy again. Yep. <clears throat> All right, any action from the council? Or questions? Or Make a motion to approve resolution 2022-20, appoint representative to the advisory board. A second. Any discussion? Is this like one meeting a month, Amy? Yes. Is it, and this isn't the meeting that moves around that, that, yes, that I came mm -hmm. to. Oh, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. The meeting that I went to that moves around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you okay with me? We learn about what other communities are doing and then we share what we're doing, so it's good, it's very informational. Yeah, I would say from my standpoint with SMGA, that's probably our biggest, one of our biggest benefits is the ability to be able to share information with other communities, what's going on. It's been helpful, I know, for me. All right, any other discussion? Not we'll vote. Brennan? Yes. Matson? Yes. Wasslager? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Jazz? Yes. All right. That is the resolution section. We're going to move to reports. Fire Chief Matt Horn. Good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, November, we had 30 calls, only six in Hartford, which is quite the change of pace. But that's pretty well. We're doing most of them. Yeah, yeah, you guys are usually the most. <laughs> Maybe. They control where they come Did we win one month? We won. We won. Yeah. There you go. No prizes. <laughs> Other than a few calls. Yeah. Uh, December training, EMS is trauma triage, CMS injuries, hemorrhage control, disaster, and mass casualty incidents, the fires, down firefighter removal, combined training, we did a gas monitor, and a Binder lift, which is a new lift assist device that we're going to trial and see if it helps us be able to lift heavier patients that have fallen or people that are unfortunately falling in the bathtub and whatnot or wet and slippery and no clothes. Very hard to lift those people up. So this will give us a device to hopefully get those people up and not hurt ourselves or the other person as well. So um, that's it for that stuff. In other news, I did not run for re-election on the fire department this year, so okay. I will not be the chief next year. Oh. So Brian is going to be the chief again. He was voted in last week. Brian Shoemaker. Oh, from uh, <clears throat> Central States. Okay. He's not in Central States. Oh, he's, he's not in Central. Hyman now. Okay. Okay. Hmm. When's that start? First of the year? Uh, middle of January. Okay. When the officers take over. All right. Well, thanks for your time as, uh, as chief. And did the storm cause you guys to have any more calls out on the interstate, or? Thankfully, we did have like zero accidents during the entire storm. Oh, that's good. That's unbelievable, actually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was surprised too. I think everybody was surprised, but we'll take it. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, any questions for the chief? All right, thanks, Matt. Okay, thank you. Amy Farr, Chamber and Economic Development Director. Um, for the Chamber side of things, um, last night we held our December meeting where we elected our new officers. So Ashley Matthews with Black Hills Federal Credit Union will be the incoming president starting January 1. Um, Vice President will be Scotty Schrader with ACE. Um, our treasurer will be Keith Miller from First Premier Bank, and then our secretary will still be Casey uh, Goble with Sunshine Foods. Um, with that also being said, um, going into committees, typically some board members will sit on committees and whatnot. Um, the ambassador committee uh, in your packet has the list there, but you'll also see that Lisa Helvig has recently stepped down um, from being chair of the ambassador committee uh, due to other volunteer um, efforts and um, work assignments. So we are looking for a new um, chair for that, that committee. 
Um, events committee is con uh, continuing to work on the burger battle, which will begin January 1, go through the 31st. And then I'll back up to that one in a minute here. Also in February, we'll have our banquet that they're working uh, very diligently on as well. Um, with that being said, we promoted our new app that we have. Um, we changed the formatting of the app. So if you go into your app store <coughs> and go to updates, you need to update it and it's gonna reflect a completely different format. So if you could please do that when you have time. Um, it's a little bit more, I think, user-friendly, but it gives us the opportunity to have more individuals or businesses uh, promote their business on that particular app. So we're excited for that. And again, going back to the burger battle, that is where you will vote for the burgers. There's going to be a certain um, or a specific form that you'll just QR code the or picture through your camera, the QR code, it'll take you to the form, you'll fill it out there and it automatically sends it over and it'll automatically tabulate for us so we don't have to do an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll have instant results. Um, that's basically it on the chamber side, um, economic development. I think everything is in the packet. Um, the only thing there I believe is we have decided on a new logo that's um, in conjunction with the new city logo. Our colors are yellow for the heart the writing is blue, and then, well, the top writing for Hartford area. And then underneath that is orange. Um, the new logo is on our website as of about five minutes ago. Um, and it's also on all of our Christmas cards that were sent out today um, to help promote that. Uh, we are looking at a new Envision logo as well, but that will be rolled out in the next Envision campaign. Other than that, I think that's it. We do not have a meeting tomorrow. Any questions? Any questions for you? Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. City engineer. Good evening. Good. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. A um, couple smaller things we're working on. Uh, working on new GIS maps for Teresa, Amy, and, and Craig. Just getting those updated with uh, the recent changes to sea limits, uh, utilities. Um, all of that, so those will be coming in uh, in the coming weeks as they're updated. Um, additionally, working on the slurry seal plans for next year, uh, working with those with Craig, um, getting those ready, um, and then um, also working through the future crossings uh, where we kind of have identified some city utility crossings of that summit pipeline to the east, or sorry, to the west, um, just to take back to the uh, PUC and, and summit and discuss those with them. And, and how that pipeline would uh, may impact future city growth. Um, excuse me. Onto our projects, um, Highway 3 Day Water Main Rule Extension. We are still starting end of the month to get those plans wrapped up, and we will uh, report, um, give an update on those plans and cost estimate at the January 3rd meeting. Um, and you know, assuming all goes well, bidding shortly thereafter um, on the Western Avenue interchange. Approach plans actually just internally reviewing those right now, and then we'll sit down with city staff and review those uh, preliminary plan and cost estimates, um, and just keep pushing forward on those plans because that is, uh, even though it's going to be bidding in a uh, well, year and a quarter from now, it'll it'll come up quick. So we're going to keep pushing forward on those, um, and then lastly, uh, continue just to just to push forward with the water resource recovery facility, uh, working very closely with uh, Rice Lake and the city on some. Um, looking at some options um, and and just really refining our schedule as we've kind of moved into the, the meat and potatoes of design right now. Any questions for me? Um, I noticed, I think you added into your report, uh, I had been talking with the superintendent regarding their logo and they, he ran it up there, the poll at their board and they said no to the funding, which kind of we expected, so. I think there'll be some, before we get to next spring, there'll probably be some additional conversations about any possible avenues for that. Yep, and there's still time, most of Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know Daniel is very involved when we call for you. So, anyway. All right, anything else for our city engineer? Anybody got any questions? All right, thank you. Craig? Uh, just a couple things, like I said, we snow is up there it was um 
like we usually get when we get that type of winds and snow. I mean, it's not the first time we've been socked in like that. <clears throat> we did leave 6th Street closed. That was a decision I made at the last minute with that road because trying to keep it open, oh, we had a path through there and somebody had been stuck up in there or worse. And so, yeah, we did have that road shut down and the fire department moved on, so they are aware. Um, but we've been busy pulling all the intersections out. I seen the state got up there on Monday and cleaned their intersection out, <clears throat> and then the uh, county came in, I think yesterday or today, and started pulling a bunch of their stuff out. So, so is, there, is there any way, Craig, that with the county running by there and windrowing that into those roadways, is there any way to coordinate so, you know, we can, because that just, mm -hmm. it turns into a mess so quick, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, there was so much up in there that <clears throat> they're trying to get their roads opened up and, yeah. you know, they're they're just going through, you know, plowing and leaving it up in there, but it's, that whole intersection, anytime we get that type of wind with that snow, it just feels yeah. like they're so bad. So the county covers where there's not city property to the west, yeah, so, right? Or so at our shop from uh, Memph down there, we take from Memph up to the right. interstate just before the bridge. That's where the state yep. takes over. Um, from Memph going all the way north, that's County Road. And then that intersection, state. And county. And county. So yeah. there's a lot of different people up in there. Bars, and, yeah. huh? Why has it got to be that way? I mean. Isn't there a simpler way? Why, is, why, is, why do three people have to be in charge of Well, the states can do their own highways. Yeah. Um, and the county, the county's tried to give these roads to the cities, but it's state statute that unless there's city property on both sides, it's up to the county to take care of it. Okay. So. So the answer is no. And the county. <laughs> The county used to do the whole road, but then yeah. about seven, six years ago, they had a new superintendent yeah. and said, nope, we're not following your streets anymore, they're yours. And a lot of it goes back to liability. I mean, right. like we can go up there and clean the intersection out, but then if somebody would get hit, it'd be liability of the city because we push the snow and we cause the accident, basically. Right. Yeah. So it's best to let each okay. entity take care of their own roads. And that's where, you know, the keyboard cowboys don't understand that there's multiple agencies involved yeah. in this process and it ain't just the city of Hartford like so, fault, yeah. you know. Yeah, I tell our guys to stay out of the intersection, I said, because we're just opening up liability if we go up in there and do anything at all. So. so would there be any advantage, Craig, to talking to them about a snow fence on Tried that? Tried years ago. Tried, okay, yeah. it didn't work. Years ago, it didn't work. Didn't work, <clears throat> okay, okay. It, uh, once that gets full, you know, but that year we tried it, it was, you know, you have to get permission from that farmer that has Correct. it. Correct. We've actually, one time we went in there with the blade, we actually made windrows with the blade back up in there. Didn't and do once it. They, once they fill up, they're, you know, like right now the ditches are full. So yeah. you need okay. snow now, we're going to have a mess with all year long. It's just going to be enough. Yeah. Okay. So there's no place for the snow to go except just start piling. Where are you hauling to? I didn't see. Um, when they're on that side over there, they've been hauling to the tree dump site. Oh, okay. And then uh, anything up in this area, we've been hauling up to sports complex. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just curious. There, so. I haven't seen any no. too much going by, and I just was wondering. Yep. Okay. Depends on where they're at, which, which way's closer. Yeah. Up, you know, so. I agree. You guys did it. Craig called me two, three times to keep me you know, informed about what was going on. So, I mean, you guys are doing your best. And when you, yeah. When Hartford happened and started blowing up, I'm telling you, I had to stop myself from yeah. taking my phone out because I would have said something that probably <clears throat> wouldn't have been very nice. Yeah, the one I type like four yeah. sentences and then deleted them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, The two homeowners on Sixth Street that we actually on the very end on there, Mike Swear and then his neighbor, I actually went and talked to them and told them that hey, here's the deal, we're just going to leave this blocked yeah. off. And they're like, no problem, as long as we can get in and out, we're fine. Right. right. We made sure we get in and out, so. You know, a lot of people don't, if they're new in town, they think that's the best way to go, and that's the worst road, because it is a whiteout right. most of the time. Oh, yeah. Kind of like that. I mean, if they just drive down Oaks and get to another street, they get there some other way. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. It's, Good. a lot of new people have moved in town over the last few yeah. years, and last year we didn't have this type of event right. happen. Right. So, it's been a couple years. So, so it's, they'll get used to it, I guess. It's going to be a long winter. Mm -hmm. so. But that's all I got unless somebody has something for me. So.
You probably figured that that was going to be a topic today, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, as, when I read the Hartford app, <laughs> <laughs> I had that one comment about uh, they should have had a better, they should have had a plan in place where they're going to put the snow I thought, they did have a plan in place, that's where I was going to put the snow <laughs> yeah. the, plan, the plan went according to the plan. You put it right across 6th Avenue, that's the problem here. So, no, we actually, uh, and we should have, we should have even went out, but we needed something at the grocery store. So I said to them, of course, down my part, I said, run down to Western, let's go down there. Holy smokes, we got down to about fifth, and you could not see bad. a thing. I mean, that was a mess. And then we drove past six, and Deb's driving, and I'm sitting on the other side, and I'm looking at that mountain of snow, and I thought, what the heck? Wow. See, I don't even drive down Western all oh. the time. <laughs> yeah, it was a mess. It was Just a mess. FYI for you guys, I did get contacted from um, Sarah Statham with the newspaper today, kind of asking what our policy is for snow removal, what our procedure is, and, and she agreed. She thinking the city did good, she think it'd be better just to get more information out to the people to know, you know, this is, you know, priority, here's what, you know, priorities, opening up the streets, and then, you know, after the storm event, coming yeah. back, cleaning out the intersections and all that, so, you know, I kind of gave her the information that our policy about removing vehicles from streets. So I believe there's going to be an article coming up okay. in the next Okay, but the paper does the post online not to go up western from Oh, well, we did, and we put it on Facebook, too, because the, the deputy came in and we said, don't, between 5th and north, don't go on western, but. Right. My guess yeah. is more people see that than they do the paper, so. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, so, but just FYI. Yeah, all right, well, thanks, Greg, again. Thanks for everything you guys have put in some extra hours, so. All right, who we got next? Karen. Yeah. Karen always says, I have nothing to add. Yeah, <laughs> the boring stuff. Same old boring. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the bills and the calendar and yeah, where the know. general fund is set. All right. Anybody got any questions for Karen? If not, we'll move to Teresa. Any additions or things you'd like to point out on your report? Just a couple <clears throat> things to point out. Um, the bike trail, um, I think it was mentioned at our last meeting that house did, on the corner where we need the easement from, did sell and close on the 15th here. So uh, as soon as they come in and fill out an application for a service and we know who that owner is, we will be um, touching base with them and talking about whether they'll okay. grant us an easement or not, which would be the best case scenario, um, if they don't, then at least we know what direction to move. Then we don't yeah. need to move with a different plan. So we'll be um, hopefully the next couple of weeks we'll making some contact and, and get something figured out with that. Um, City logos, I brought this up before, we're still waiting for a quote from one sign company. Um, I basically told them I need it by the end of the year so we can kind of move forward with the rest of changing out the rest of our signage and whatnot. Um, because I am working with FEMA on uh, getting a grant to replace all our welcome signs with something different. And, and um, when we get the quotes from the sign companies, I want to be able to come to you guys, get something okayed, and get that grant in the process because we know how fast FEMA moves usually. So I want to get that going. And then um, we're also looking at a new welcome sign act. You know, we talked about the exit of 390, you know, where the new plant's going to go. So, yeah. you know, once spring hits, we'll want to start doing something there too. So we are, or I'm still pushing them to, to move ahead, but I want to get everything in place so when spring comes, we, we can move ahead with some of this stuff. Um, the only other thing um, I just want to bring up is, as Michael and Craig said, you know, we have been meeting basically weekly now for a while, Craig and I and, and Jesse with ISG and Rice Lake. Um, we had a kind of longer working session just this last week on Monday to discuss the layout of the plan, placement, the, the list station, whatnot. Um, Rice Lake's going to um, go hammer out some numbers or whatnot. I'm hoping to come back to you guys by the second meeting in January and kind of give you an update. Okay, here's where we are, kind of go over and make sure we're all on the same page and, you know, give you some cost estimates. Just, yeah, so I'm hoping by that time Rice Lake thinks they'll be able to get cost figures together and whatnot. We'll, we know what we're looking at then. So hopefully, okay. um, they said by that second meeting in January, they can have something for us. So we'll give you an update that. Right. So that's what I want to have at this point. You got, a, you got any questions for Teresa? Thank you. We'll move to old business. 
update on the Summit Carbon uh, Pipeline. I didn't really have any updates. I kind of put what we went over before, just to keep you in the loop. Basically, the the, the biggest thing I guess that has happened since we last talked about this or had this, you know, in our packets, you know, at our last meeting, is um, the PUC did put out a um, timeline for the hearing dates, and I included that in the packet for you. They're going to start hearing or holding hearings to to talk about people for and against the pipeline and go through that whole process with them. And they're gonna start on, on March 3rd, those hearings are, and hopefully we wrap up by the end of the month, so. Um, before the meeting started, I mentioned to a couple of the people up here that in the paper, I think it was either Sunday or yesterday, uh, Summit has filed suit against two of the counties that <clears throat> enacted the moratorium. Uh -huh. That's just started. Mm -hmm. They just filed suit against two of the counties up north. The first two <coughs> was Brown and Edmonds, I think, and this is two other McPherson, maybe two other counties. But uh, the article in the paper made it look like they were gonna, you know, they're they're going after it pretty good. So well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any questions on that matter from the council? If not, we will move to new biz. Review, approve 2023 Minnehaha County Sheriff Agreement for Police Service. This is our yearly contract with them. Um, it keeps the same number of hours. And this is our basically our nights and our weekends. It's not um, like the Damien's position, our daytime cop. So this is gives us 100 hours of nights and weekend um, time, which between that and Damien being here, that position, we get about 24 seven coverage as best we can get. You know, they, they have shift changes and whatnot too, but that's, um, that gives us almost 24 hour coverage day a week. They did <coughs> the fee just because of rising costs of like everything else, gas, insurance, wages, training, it did go up 8.12%. We did know that dollar number though at budget time and so the figure on the contract is the figure that we have in our budget for 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Not well, well, Wasslocker, yes, Matson, yes, Bredeman, yes, Jazz, yes, O'Hara, yes. All right, the next one is review approve the 2023 animal control contract with uh, Sioux Falls Humane. Same thing, this is our yearly contract, they do our animal control services, you know, for pets running at large or, or whatnot. Um, they have no changes to the contract, no increase in pricing or services. Um, the cost, though, obviously depends on, you know, how much we got to call them in. But, you know, we do have budgeted money of what we estimate it to be going off of previous years in budget for it. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 Animal Control Contract with the Boston Humane Society. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. O'Hara? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Brenneman? Yes. Matson? Yes. Wasslocker? Yes. All right. Uh, wait, I gotta make sure I'm right here. Yep. Third one is review approved 2023 fire protection service agreement. This is our agreement with the fire department that we do every year. Basically, when they built the new fire station, a condition of their loan with rural development is the loan payment is $80,000 and the city agreed to give the fire department that $80,000. That's our guarantee of the loan. And so we have to go into an agreement every year to guarantee this $80,000 for them. And obviously in return, you know, we do get fire protection services out of it, so. I make a motion to approve the agreement for fire protection services. Second. Any discussion? I think we asked at budget time how many years we got left on that. Yeah, and it was. <laughs> I should have told you. Yeah, you should have pointed that into me. It's. I looked it up. It's 
We've got quite a few more years yeah. to have on it. Yeah. If I remember, it's, okay. it's over 10, 10, okay. 15 years. I was just curious. It's a while, yeah. I know, yeah. I, we talked about it at Lenny. So. Yeah, because it was like a 25 year loan. All right. No other discussion. We'll vote. Jazz? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Bradley? Yes. Matt? Upstate? Madsen? Yes. Wasslocker? Yes. All right. Our oil appointments. Yeah. We've got that ready to go. So we have two, two appointments that need to be made tonight. We had four folks from planning and zoning that their term was up. Stacy Keetel, Michelle Kilborn, Tony Randall, Tim Graham. I reached out to all four of them. They are all willing to take another two-year term. Um, I think we've had things going pretty good with P&Z. So I would ask for a uh, motion to approve those four individuals for two more year term. I make a motion to approve those four individuals for two year term. I'll second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Brennan? Yeah. Matson? Yes. Wasslager? Yes. Jazz? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. The final one is for the Park and Rec Board. Uh, as we know, Troy Lifeson, when he helped get this established, he said he'd step, stay on one year and then he wanted to step down. Uh, had some discussion with him. Teresa and I talked a little bit, and I would ask for a motion to approve Candy Lewin at, to fill that position. It'll be a three year term. Back when the pool board, or pool, what were they called? Yeah. Committee. Candy was very instrumental in getting that whole deal going and doing the funding. We thought she'd be a great uh, addition. Troy lived outside the city. Candy lives outside the city. We're so inclusive, we'll let people be on our boards. So I would, <laughs> how's that? I like it. Very inclusive. Very inclusive. I'd ask for a motion to make that uh, appointment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not, we'll vote. Wasslager? Yes. Matson? Yes. Brennan? Yes. Jez? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. All right, that's it on the uh, agenda. We need to go to executive session for economic development and personnel. All right? Somebody make that motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn? No, we have to the gun. <laughs> Make a motion to approve that two hundred and fifty dollars bonus for the year on employees. Okay. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Boss on it. Yes. Matson? Yes. Brennan? Yeah. Jazz? Yes. O'Hara? Yes. Approved. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you.